Thank you, you very, very patient individuals. Shout out to anybody that bought merch in the last drop. I love you all. Sorry, taking a long time to ship out. But that's not the point. The point is, welcome. And on this episode, we got Aaron Wong. And Aaron Wong is a NorCal OG. Uh, I've ran around Japan with him on my first trip. He let me drive his car that he rolled over at Mahon. Uh, he assembled the Super D Nauki car, the original Matsuri, the Super D Matsuri car. Um, and now he's opening a shop in Oakland, Pandora Motorsport. So I went there to hang out with him, talk business, talk funny stories, talk early NorCal days, Japan trip, mountains, stuff like that. So this has been a pretty heavily requested episode. I'm happy to finally give it to you. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I did. We definitely had some beers. <laughs> Check it out. T -t 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 tire Streets. That's right. Another Tire Streets ad. And if you listen to the podcast, you know, you fucking know the Tire Streets is where you get Accelerus. Accelerus 651s to be exact. And if you want 20% off on those bad boys, goodest 651, 20% off. That's what we run all around front and rear. Sometimes 100 tread wear, sometimes 200 tread wear. Depends on how we're feeling. Depends on the the outing, you know, kind of environment, kind of vibe. <laughs> um, you can get other tires too. Good as, good as 15 gets you anything off tire streets. So. You want tow rig tires, you want mud terrains, you want freaking tires for your side chicks. Fucking, she needs two tires or something. I don't know. <laughs> what? Your side person? It's 2022, 20, everybody. Uh, <laughs> tire streets. Accelerators. Buy them? Buy them. Fucking buy them. <laughs> Man, I hope they don't listen to this. What's up, Aaron? What's up, Palmer? Uh, just drove, drove my ass over here on a Friday. Yeah, sounds real smart coming from the city. <laughs> uh, brought some beers, and now we're in your new shop, dude. Mm -hmm. Pandora Motorsports. Yeah. Please like and subscribe <laughs> on my Instagram. <laughs> um, so I I didn't know of you yet, but the first time that I saw one of your cars was like before it was Week Fest. I think it was like something else. It was at the Japantown Mall in San Francisco. Oh no, that was Week. I think it's Week Fest. Was that the first Week Fest? I think so. I saw, so I'm like waiting in line. I'm with all my friends and I look across the street and there's three fucking sick S chassis, like super fitted, just like everything you want, you know, like just kitted, like, and this is like, I don't know what year, wait, that was like, it's like 2008, 2009 or something like that. Yeah. Maybe? It was a while ago. And, um, I'm like, damn those cars are sick right didn't think like anything of it for like a super long time i never like put it together mm -hmm. um because you guys were kind of doing the thing like back in the day like early norcal trip stuff yeah i think we we started out doing stuff in around like 2005 2006 that was like yeah that's like when i graduated high school and then um at the time, I think my first, yeah, my first car was a Supra MK3. And, uh, NA? It was NA, but I did convert it to, to turbo. Sick. Via junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you found a, uh, 7M GTE in the yeah. junkyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No and, way. Uh, me and my, uh, my uncle went there and, uh, he helped me pull, pull it out and, uh, brought it home and did swap in my, garage in the middle of the summer i remember falling asleep underneath my car like <laughs> regularly just like spending all day under there nope. um but yeah we we used to go out to um altamont raceway in tracy 
and that was like the first of drift events around here how did you how did you like find out about the altamont events uh i don't know probably like my my friends just told me i don't remember exactly it was it was quite a long time ago um <clears throat> i did end up crashing my mk3 at uh at the track no way <laughs> yeah. smashed the whole quarter panel of it um was that your first event yeah uh yeah yeah i think that was my first event um there's there's actually a youtube video and uh i forget who took i don't know who took the video but in the video uh, after I crash, you hear one of the dudes in the background laughing and he says, I paid $50 to motherfucking wreck my car. <laughs> <laughs> and he just starts laughing and my car is all fucked up, pulling away from me, uh, me on the K wall. <laughs> I got it, it. It actually, it did pretty well on YouTube. I think back in the day I had like a hundred thousand views on, oh, on my crashing? crash video. Is yeah. it still up? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, someone oh, find that. Yeah. It's, it's like Supra drift crash. Dude, dang. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you crashed. I was your- trying to get monetized, but uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, they they never gave me money. Damn. Um, Could have that YouTube money early on. Yeah. <laughs> so, crash your MK3. <laughs> yes. Um, crash my MK3, and then I got another MK3 because I liked them. Swap my motor over and everything, and uh, oh man, this is a good story. <laughs> Swapped it over to a new chassis that was like a hard top, it wasn't a T top like the first one, and it was pretty much everything I wanted. And uh, we're on the freeway, me and a couple friends, um, we're on the freeway to go to San Jose to go buy some car parts or something, and we see a 240 like riced out like had like flashing like reverse lights or something random like that yeah and i had yeah two two of my buddies in the car and we pulled up next to them and it was uh, it was raining and uh one of them pulls out like a notepad and writes like your car sucks and held it up to the window (laughs) (laughs) and the the dude got pissed or, or something or thought we wanted to race so he got behind me and he kept like lurching to try to get me to go but one time he lurched too hard and he fucking hit me and spun me out because it's the rain like you know got the rear end all light and i hit the fucking wall and then wrecked wrecked it so then after that uh i decided that maybe uh supras weren't my thing so uh one of my homies sold me a s chassis and that's kind of like where drifting really started escalating for me. Yeah, the MK3 is a difficult chassis. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like pretty big and heavy, and I feel like for my skill level back then, like it was a bit too much. But I think if I did another one these days, I you think could I could. It. Yeah, I think I could make it sick, which which I would like to. Um, I have the Jay Z in this car, but maybe I'd want to move it over to. The soup run put like a four cylinder in here or something that'd be sick yeah what uh what year were you going to altamont like was that um yeah that was probably like 2005 or 2006 i think damn so altamont crashing supras yeah and uh yeah i mean did did like a lot of mountain driving too before yeah. And the Supra was a fucking tank cuz I could like hit the side of a mountain with that thing and like <laughs> I could still drive. It was that thing was strong. Dude, the 90s the 90s 90s like Toyotas are indestructible. Yeah. Hell yeah. I I love Toyotas. Um yeah, I'm probably I would I would say I'm pretty biased to Toyota, but I like Nissans a lot. I'll always go back to uh nissan 240sx hatchback yeah that's my thing that's your thing i've had every i've had every iteration of 240sx but i'll always get it i'll always pick hatch how many s chassis have you had at this point uh 
Well, I mean, like I used to sell cars, so I don't know yeah. if that number counts, but like, I don't know, probably like 20 or something like that. It's a fair amount. Mm-hmm. Um, so fast forward, like my, you, you took like a break from drifting. Yeah, I stopped drifting. Um, I graduated college in like uh, 2010, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, I think me and my buddies were all trying to grow up. So we decided to all sell our <laughs> drift cars to grow up, which was kind of dumb. Um, but that led me to do other things um, like racing uh, motorcycles. I raced Supermoto for a few years and that was really fun and learned a lot from that. And a lot of that skill like transferred over to like drifting. So I'm glad I'm glad that happened. Got to do racing. Yeah. I would like to do some more, um, but maybe like road racing. Yeah. That's kind of why I picked up that BMW. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You, you tend to like get into stuff and go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say I, yeah, I, I go for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I met you, I think at the track kind of when you guys were getting back into drifting mm-hmm. and I'd, I'd been doing it for a while and then um, we were all kind of like, I don't know, interested in the same driving. And yeah, same style. Yeah. And I, I like, my friends were like, oh yeah, these are some of like the OG dudes of NorCal. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I didn't really like know you guys super well at the time. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, then you kind of like, we were at events all the time. We we're like driving a lot. And then yeah. All the like super D stuff kind of happened. Like, yeah. Bringing Nauki over. And I feel like when uh, the first time I really like had a lot of interaction with you was that final bout at uh, Park. Yeah. And I saw your Beamer. I think I did. I get a ride along. Maybe. I forget. Um, but yeah, I think I talked to you a lot there. Yeah. And then probably after that event, when we came back and I saw you more often at like NorCal events, that's when we started like talking and chopping it up more. Yeah. I I think that was the day that I met Darius too. Um, yeah, me, Lucky, um, me, Lucky, Darius and Jolia all drove up to final bout together. And, uh, yeah, that was funny because, uh, the, the first leg of the trip, um, Darius and Lucky were in the front, and me and Jolly were in the back, pounding beers. <laughs> and we had to make like four or five pit stops because we killed like just between me and her, we like killed like a twelve pack or something. <laughs> Jolly is Lucky's wife. Yes, Jolly is awesome. Yeah, the best people. Um, yeah. So I like I met you guys there, and then yeah, definitely like seeing you around more. And then we like drove together. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys had like a big hand in kind of the like early Super D stuff with like Nauki, and you built the. I mean, you you assembled the motor that was in the Super D S. I didn't assemble the motor, yeah. but I put the car together. Yeah, yeah, like you know, put all the suspension, uh, put the motor in. Or no, the motor was already in. But yeah, just just put you just assembled slapped, the car. Assembled the car. Yeah, <laughs> I remember there was like the post on Jalopnik that was like talking about how built the car was, and you're just like, <laughs> you're like, dude, that's that's like D1 Shreelu car. Like I like I put that car together. You know? Yeah, like, like, people were trying to like hype it up like it was some crazy built car. Yeah, yeah it was like, just a stock SR with bolt-ons, and. Uh, yeah, just a pretty pretty basic car. Um and power FC. Yeah. But I like I like I like it. Yeah. That's that's kind of one of my uh uh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um just my mentality and my like vision for drifting and just motorsports is like just keeping things simple and running and reliable so you can enjoy it consistently and not worry about like making a million horsepower and uh 
throwing reliability. I mean, I know you can make a lot of power reliably, but like not, just just not driving like a bunch of money. Yeah, just driving um in general is is my priority and uh that's kind of like um that's how I feel with cars that I want to be working on at the shop. I want to prioritize driving and um maintaining them so they can do that yeah drive as much as possible yeah i just want to like you know like there's i have customers that just want to drive so bring your car here i'll tell you my experience and like what i can do to a car to make it keep going yeah, yeah keep going like i mean like this car uh it's like five or six years of like pretty hard driving and like it doesn't make the most power, but it's like fast enough to keep up with like most cars. Yeah. And uh I haven't had to do anything but regular maintenance. Yeah, so, I mean that's what you want. You want like I want to spread my gospel. <laughs> not not to say that it is the the most correct or anything, but I mean that's it's I don't know, I feel like it's worked well for me. It's nice to have it's nice to have like a driver slash mechanics input on what works because you know it works and you've like been you know you've you've like wrenched in japan you've like yeah you've driven cars out there Mm -hmm. you've rolled one at nehan Mm -hmm. which might be the coolest thing of any of any of the people i know have ever done in drifting yeah i um i actually have the uh the drift and goku magazine that features the flipped car yeah it's right on top of it yeah it's like that's the pinnacle dude uh i guess if you want to say pinnacle as in like making a pinnacle of like making a scene (laughs) i mean i don't know if that's really something to be proud of but dude you went you went in i went i went for it yeah you go for it dude and uh just yeah just not accustomed to driving on the right side of the car no (laughs) And you were there that day. I was. We, we we hung out a lot in Japan, and you got to drive that car too, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. That made my that made my life at the time. <laughs> it was like 2016, so it was like right after Super D. We had like kind of become friends, and you saw that I was in Japan, and like I didn't I didn't actually know you were there right away. And you're like, didn't we have the same flight? And I saw you at the airport. Yeah, yeah. I think that was that was cool. Yeah, that's cool how that worked out. Yeah, that the time that we flew out together was uh, the second trip. Yeah, and I, I remember I like went. I was like, "Can I sit with them?" And they're like, "Okay." It's <laughs> like, "Yes." Yeah, that was fun. That um, was a lot of fun in Japan. Yeah, that trip was cool. I missed out on some stuff. Uh, the The first trip, I spent. I I I was getting in trouble because I was. Like literally wanted to spend the entire trip hanging out with all y'all. <laughs> like I was just like, dude, this is so sick. Like I want to. This is like the dream. Yeah, and, doing doing car stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, getting to drive that car, man, was pretty sick. Yeah, I think that's like. Uh, that's something you want to do in your life. Yeah, I think like if you're into drifting. That's, I mean, at least for like. The style of driving that we like, yeah. I think uh, that is the place to be. Yeah, and you've gotten to do quite a bit of driving in Japan. Yeah, went uh, went to Yamehan yeah, and then did like the C and E course, and then um, Suzuka Twin, or is it Suzuka Twin? Or no, it's Suzuka the small track. Um, that was a fun one too. <clears throat> um, Got to do some. Well, yeah. What? <laughs> uh, some non non track stuff. Oh yeah, we had a lot of extracurricular <laughs> fun in Japan. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. I'm just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's kind of the dream. Like, I don't know. What is the dream? Uh, I would go and drive the hills. Go and drive. man. Yes, yeah, so we got to we got to drive the hills. That was cool too. 
what was that like? Because like, I mean, I know you guys did a ton of that when you were starting out because there weren't a lot of tracks, mm -hmm. and you had like your crew that where you're just like, oh wait, before we before we go into that rabbit hole, yeah, um, yeah, street drifting in Japan with the driver, uh, that starts with N the letter N, <laughs> was fucking insane. Um, <clears throat> did you get to ride in that car in his car in the mountains or no? I didn't get to go. Oh fuck! Okay, I didn't get to go. Uh, I was trying to meet up with you guys at the train station, and uh -huh. I was getting like the the like a death stare, pretty much. Like, oh shit! Yeah. Okay. So like, um, very important life moment that I uh may have made the wrong eh, decision on. It's cool. Like, we can we can go back and do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that driver, uh, I've never been like really scared in a car yeah. and like never went that fast, but like we were in the car and, uh, we had the windows open at night and he was going so fast in the hills that I remember either my hat or my beanie got like, like flew off my head and I had to grab it before it like hit him in the face. And like, that's how fast we were going like sideways. Dude. yeah and so i was just like blown away yeah. it was it was crazy and you're like scary okay. but very fun and you're like oh the level is like way higher than i that i've experienced yeah for damn sure yeah that uh that set the bar yeah i can't yeah i haven't ridden and had that much fun in uh i don't I, ever I don't know. yeah yeah since then that's yeah, that was really cool. Uh, yeah, I think it would be hard to top that. I can't, I can't like imagine the scenario that I'd uh, rather have in drifting. Yeah, I don't uh, like how how else would you top that? I don't know. For I mean, like in in terms of like what we kind of like. Yeah. Well, especially like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah doing this with the big windows kind of fun though oh <laughs> yeah uh big windows it's kind of like a mirror yeah true um on this comfy couch <laughs> anybody want take a seat <laughs> wait uh i need to take a piss yeah go for it Around these parts, we like to support the homies. And uh, bash bars support bumpers. And bumpers are something that we should all have. But sometimes we don't. And sometimes we crash into each other. And at that point, you want a good quality bash bar. And tell, let me tell you, my teammates and I definitely know <laughs> how to test out a bash bar. Limitless Auto Fab, they got that hot shit. Um, they're just dudes out of the Midwest. They're drifters looking to start a business and help pay for their crippling drift addiction like the rest of us. Um, they got 350Z bars, S13 bars, really nice design and support the bumpers really well. Um, they got E36 stuff coming up, which I want because most of the E36 bash bars kind of suck. Uh <laughs> We got some cool ideas. I'm going to try them out. So stay tuned for that. And if you're like, I need one right now, go buy it, dude. Limitlessautofab.com. But if you want to be patient and you want to save some money, they got a Black Friday sale coming up. Thanksgiving, 12 a.m. December 1st is when it ends. So we got like five days or whatever. Limitlessautofab.com only. 15% off store wide. 20% off bash bars if you buy a pair. Spend that money. Um, they could do raw or powder coat. That's good stuff, man. Check them out. Tell them I sent you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you want to sit like kind of more in front of it? I think it'd be like just a little closer. No, you don't have to like be all up on it, but. Maybe all right. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Longest piss break ever. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so I don't remember what we were talking about, so we'll just talk about some other shit. Yeah, um, that's fine. <clears throat> so, like, when you were starting out, there weren't a lot of tracks. You guys were doing a lot of, like, mountain driving and yeah, street stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, did was there there was like there was like some infamy like i feel like you guys your guys is like crew at one point like wolf rain because wolf rain wasn't a shop always it was a team before. yeah it was started out as a, a drift team um so there was a couple of us from the east bay so we'd mainly drive like redwood road in oakland and then there was the san jose dudes and they drove calaveras um yeah both are pretty fun i crashed at calaveras and uh i i hit a fence <clears throat> and it left like a fence post indentation on my car and to this day that post is still like bent over <laughs> <laughs> we went and checked it we drove calaveras a couple weeks ago still there i drove calaveras back in the day once that was yeah that that spot was tight it was like after after school, me and Darius would go to his place, which was right by Calaveras, and hop in his S14 and just go sh- like street drifting in the rain and like, like core memories, dude. Yeah, that place was pretty fun. Um, do you do you like? I don't know. You've been around like a long time in drifting in Northern California. Like, you got to see the progression. Mm-hmm. And like lots of new and old faces and new faces and old faces again, like yeah. come through. Um like I don't know. What's like what's like something that's like consistent through all these years? Consistent throughout all these years. And if you can't think of anything consistent, what has changed? Uh I feel like NorCal has stepped up their driving um, a lot in the past couple of years. Um, yeah, a lot more focus on seat time instead of having like flashy builds. Um, I mean, there are ugly cars. <laughs> That's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think... Uh, if you think you might have one of those ugly cars, bring it to Pandora Motorsports in Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you looking right. Now. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of good drivers now at uh, at local local events. Um, I feel like the last um, Good Luck League competition, um, everyone came out and drove really well. Yeah, uh, you were judging I was, a lot. Yeah, I was, I was judging, and uh, I was surprised. Um, since the last comp that I judged, like whatever it was that day, everyone was like going for it, but like doing it well and consistently, yeah. uh, which is something that, you know, wasn't there before. Yeah. That was an impressive competition. Like I had, I got knocked out, I think like second round yeah. by Sam and I was just like, yo, dude, <laughs> Sam stepped it up. Yeah. Like he, it was, it was really cool to see so many people throw down. Um, yeah, a lot of surprises too. Not only yeah. like drivers that we already consistent consistently knew ripped, but there yeah. was some that like surprised us, and it was yeah, it was great. Yeah, judging with uh, Taco and Lucky. Yeah, that was yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and like I mean, yeah, people like Julio came down from Washington, mm-hmm. and like Julio rips, and like you know, like <laughs> yeah, he um he didn't. To do so well in the comp yeah i think i don't i don't i don't know if i've watched but i don't know shit happens shit happens definitely and uh yeah um just setting yourself up for success is a big thing in drifting just having your car set up right and uh <clears throat> being in the right mind space yeah that's, that's important thing. definitely do not i i always had this problem where i would just get too excited and just fucking blow it 
<laughs> getting excited man i it's i think I, it's like a it's a positive thing that i have but also it like gets me in trouble too just being way too fucking stoked <laughs> i've done it i think we've all done it yeah that's like i don't know we yeah you get like amped up and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah just like trying to go for it but yeah. uh not not landing it on the execution yeah i've yeah <laughs> i've definitely knocked myself out of a few competitions um like oh i'm gonna throw it in crazy and you're like why did i why didn't i yeah, just throw did... it in regular yeah. like regular good yeah like, like upper tier not like just the fastest rolling the dice to too hard man <laughs> yeah it'll get you yeah Damn, did that Julio thing sound harsh? Should probably should we edit edit that out? Nah, he'll be fine. Nah, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a good fucking driver. I've, yeah, I've seen I've seen him go. Yeah, but uh, that yeah, just wasn't it just, his day. It just wasn't his day. Yeah, yeah. It, it was weird. I, yeah, I, we all have. We, I don't yeah, know. come to NorCal, and fucking find out. <laughs> 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 just kidding, just kidding. I I like everybody from everywhere, and I hate people. From everywhere <laughs> equally same those are wise words from bob he's he doesn't uh he doesn't discriminate he hates everybody equally mm. who's bob bob uh bob is a guy that i met when i was like 15 or 16 bought some 240 or my friend was trying to buy a car from him from craigslist and uh, before he got there, Bob sold the car. And so he felt bad. So he took us out to go get like milkshakes or something at A&W. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we just started hanging out with him. He's like a NorCal OG that everyone knows. Um, and we, we'd always just go um, street drifting together in the Oakland Hills. He had like a, he, his favorite car is a S14. Um, but a lot of our driving together back then was um, him in a TE Corolla. Sick. Uh, and it was like, it was like fucking like automatic. <laughs> but he would just like go ham and like tear it up. Um, but he's kind of been the, he was the guy that like got me into drifting um, and actually like helped me like foster um, all my like, drift relationships when i was younger like he introduced me to darius oh whoa. yeah uh so um i met darius on one random day where bob wanted to show me his san jose friends and uh we went there and we went street drifting together and that's how we met and i like i i still have uh i have photos from the day we met which is like kind of romantic yeah <laughs> um and then yeah, and after after we went street drifting, he was he was still in high school when I first met him. Um, but after he graduated, he ended up going to San Jose State, also where I went. And then we started hanging out at school, and then we became a lot closer. Yeah, like how cool is it that people that you meet through drifting become like lifelong friends? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, that's you know. Like he he just got married and you're at his wedding and you met him because of drifting. Yeah, it's like, kind of it's kind of weird. That's pretty cool. But I guess that's cool. Is uh, yeah, I guess I, I I'll, I'll admit that. Um, <laughs> my bad. It's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So the early days, take a break, come back. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think what I noticed when I came back this time around was that um, when I was younger, my car and maybe even I were not, was not prepared for success. Mm. And that's why I think when I was younger, I didn't drive as well. So this time I said, okay, I'm going to do it like, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to set myself up for success. I'm going to pick an engine that is reliable, but has good power. And I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that train. Yeah. Jay-Z boys. Yep. 
Well, one JV VTI life. Yeah. Uh, this thing has been fucking solid. Fucking fuck our beast. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't want. I mean, everyone likes different things. Yeah. You can enjoy something and I can enjoy something. We don't yeah. have to always agree. Agreed. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Some people like certain drifting styles and it may not be my cup of tea. And I'll probably talk shit, <laughs> but like at the end of the day, I, I really, I just want everyone to enjoy, enjoy things the way they do. Yeah. Enjoy. And if thing. I can sway somebody, <laughs> cool. If not, I'm not tripping. I mean, you've been around, dude. You know, it feels weird. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I've been around, but. I guess so. I guess I've been doing it for long enough. Yeah. Yeah, a lot longer than some some of the newer people. I mean, I would say that you're still doing it, and that's that's like pretty rare. Like, how many people have like oh, come yeah, and gone? You know what I the, mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. There's like this weird group of people who like seem to be like in it for life. <laughs> oh shit! I'm a lifer. You might be a lifer, dog. <laughs> shit. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where where things go from here. To be honest, <laughs> I mean, you got like you got the kind of new generation coming up. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, there's. I mean, there's like some promising people, but there's a lot of cl- uh, like TikTok clout stuff generation. Yeah, that I'm just. I don't know. I just don't, uh, I don't vibe on that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if more people want to be into it, then I support that. Um, I guess that's just more money for the industry. Yeah. And, uh, I guess I'm in that industry. Yeah. If you're a TikToker, bring a car down to Pandora Motors. Oh, hell California. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have, right. have fools walking through the front door with fucking cameras facing themselves. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a dickhead thing. Mm. But I mean, like, you're a podcaster, so it's yeah, like, it's damn, near, it's damn near the same thing. I walk through your door with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> And we're sitting, we're sitting here and you're, uh, I mean, as long as, as long as, uh, as long as I get some kind of like heads up, man, I don't want some fool fucking kicking my door open saying, oh shit, I'm over here at Pandora Motorsports. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Don't, common, common, yeah. Common, common sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man. We are talking some shit. <laughs> but like I said. Just want everyone to enjoy themselves. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt me that someone else is enjoying themselves. So, yeah, go at it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I respect that. I don't. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's like yeah, everybody has their preference on like how things should be done or like how you know what they think the sport is or like what they think mm-hmm. cool is. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, like I like to talk shit. Not to be uh, hateful yeah. or anything. It's just it's just fun. <laughs> it's just, at the end of the day, it's just fun. I don't I don't hate anyone really. I just I just it's just funny. I like to <laughs> I like to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what's it been like opening a shop like on your own and like doing your thing? Like, is it? <clears throat> I know, like, because this is like this is like a lot of people's dream. Let's be real. Like, opening a shop is a lot of people's dream, um, especially one that can do what you can do, right? Like, like, mm-hmm. what's that been like? It has been uh, very exciting for me. Um, you know, I had my other shop, um, but that was with a partner. And when you do that, when you're partnered up with someone, your your vision is kind of split between the two. Yeah. Um, but now at this 
at this shop, it is fully my own vision and I can do everything the way I want to and run things the way I want to. So that is, that is great for me. And, uh, I've always said this, but like, if I can, if I can do this for the rest of my life and like live a reasonable lifestyle where I can just afford to do the things I want to, to have fun. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, that would be the fucking dream. Cause I mean, I don't need to be like rich. It would be cool. <laughs> but like, if I can make a good living and travel and, uh, like fuck around and have all the hobbies I want, then yeah, that'd be fucking rad. So give me some business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've always been pretty like uh I don't know. Well like, humble but like also not I don't want to say minimalist. I don't know. But I don't know. You're not like I yeah. You're not very extra with stuff. Yeah, I think I think so. I I'm I would say I'm a practical person so yeah when i say that like like it comes back to like my car and like how much power i want to make i want a car that will make a reasonable amount of power but also like run all the time and not have any like major issues and I think I just like jinx myself you know, <laughs> now my shit's gonna be fucked up but <laughs> no. um but no it's it's been solid and uh um, I mean, I'm not aiming to do super high level competition, so uh, this is how I enjoy drifting. Yeah. Um, so like all your trips to Japan were for your last business. Mm -hmm. You got to like experience some cool stuff. Um, like, what was it like going there for the first time after? Like all those years of, I mean, because like when you started, like Japan was drifting. Like, yeah. There wasn't like a lot over here yet. Yeah, I watched Initial D. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what uh, what was it like going over there for the first time and like meeting some of these people and like getting to see some of the driving, like you know, because that's it's very obvious that's the driving that you yeah appreciate and want to replicate. It was. It was life changing. Yeah. Um I is that is that like extra of me to use no, that? No. It, I mean not. like I I agree. It I, was really I felt the same. Yeah, it was really cool. Um everything. I mean not, not only not only like the driving, but just like uh everything down to like convenience and <laughs> um drinking and it was it was it's just a good time over there. Yeah, we have some good people. Time. People aren't people are nice. People are nice. Yeah. Um. When uh when was the first time that you went? See, I'm not good with numbers and all that. <laughs> uh, so it was you were there. That was your first time. Yeah, so that was my first time. Was that your first time? Uh huh. Yeah, that was that was my first time. Um. A lot of a lot of first. Um yeah. I got to visit like the Honda Museum. Sick. Which was really, really fucking cool. And uh next to the Honda Museum, there's like a cart track too. What? Yeah. So uh we uh, we went to uh, the Honda Museum with um remember Yosuke? Mm hmm Uh Suga. Yeah. Uh we went we went to go race uh go karts after the museum and he he dusted my ass. He was no good. Way. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Um uh, haven't talked to him in a minute, but He's the one that does the videography, right? Yeah. 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 He's he's good people. Um I don't know what he's doing as of late, but um I would like to link up with him again. He was he was fun. Um yeah. but where where were we? I don't know, man. We had, we had We were just talking about oh, having a good time in Japan <laughs> and uh a lot of first life changing. Mm -hmm. Um I think in terms of like being in Japan, like technologically, they're very advanced. Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just like buying things is yeah. easy. You're just like getting on the train was kind of easy. Or no, maybe that's because I had help of a friend, <laughs> Yusef. 
Yusef help me guide me through Japan a lot. Navigate thrash racing. <laughs> That's Yusef. Um. Yeah, he. I mean, like you know, when we went to the train station, he would tell me which which buttons to push, like which which train I'll be taking and stuff. Um. But yeah, a lot a lot of things are very convenient there, like. Um. Even, yeah, even if, even if you don't speak the language, like, like you can buy ramen from like a machine yeah. instead of like being nervous in front of someone that you don't speak their language. You don't speak their language. And you're like, oh, sick! All right, and you just hand them a ticket. Yeah, and they make exactly what you want. And you're mm-hmm. like, yes. Yeah. What What do you? Uh, what is your favorite memory? I guess of when we that time we went uh get, getting getting to mayhan was like one of the most stressful days of my life oh did you do like train and all that stuff i came get- from tokyo oh shit and the and like i don't know how much i want to say but like some shit happened in the morning and i was like we we're late and oh I, and i was like i don't know like at the time i was like this is my first time ever oh. gonna like like i was like I'm only probably going to go to Japan like one time in my life. Mm. Like, like I have, there's an event at Mayhan. Like mm. Aaron told me like, I got to get out there. Like, and I'm like doing everything I can to like make it in time. And it was just like, it was high stress. I'll just yeah. say that. It was like one of the most high stress days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not easy to get there. Like, especially yeah. like it was traveling as like a foreigner. Wake up. Take the take the Shinkansen from Tokyo. Then you have to take like the local train. Yeah. So then I got a rental car, and that was like a whole thing because like I hadn't been to Osaka yet, but like in Tokyo, like a lot of people speak English, like at least enough for it's like mm. you can kind of get by. Yeah. And I got off the train in Osaka, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like people were bringing out like books and like pointing at like English words and stuff at like the rental car place, and I was just like, this is gonna be interesting. And then like driving through osaka like never i'd never even left the country before and i'm driving wrong side of the road so wait that was the first time you left the country yeah and then you went to oh wait, that's yeah that's pretty drastic yeah, yeah. and i'm trying <laughs> to drive to like it would be like i don't know it would be like if you've never been to america and you like drive through the city or land, something you like land at like new york and then you like <laughs> take a take a train to like take a subway to the train station and then take the train to like I mean, I don't know. What's like three hours away on by train? It's like now. taking an Amtrak and then hopping on BART. <laughs> yeah. And then and yeah. then getting off and then and going getting... to a uh, Enterprise rent a car. <laughs> yeah. And like then having to drive like from like, you know, some like all in one day just to make it to a racetrack. Yeah. Dude, I was burnt. Like I was so mad yeah, when I, mean, I got like, there. But like literally as soon as I drove up the little hill, you know, you see the yeah, drive, the, 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 the sign. The sign. I was yeah. just like my mood went from like Shit. full blown meltdown to like the happiest man on earth. Like hell yeah. And just like driving up the top and you like see cars entering and then you like drive down a little hill and you're mm-hmm. like, Holy shit. I'm here. This is sick. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. I think, I mean, I like first, first time, first I time I rocked like, up as soon as we went like up that hill, I was just like, yo, we fucking made it. Yeah. Like, Cause I mean, you'd seen it like, I'm mean, like, I'm yeah, like, I said, I'm pretty sure I still have the ticket uh i do too you do from, the, from the entry gate yeah, yeah. yeah. I still it's have on my, my fridge <laughs> sick um yeah was that your first experience like when you were in japan was going to mehan the first drifting it, experience oh uh i don't remember the exact order but i'm pretty sure as soon as i pulled up there i was like yeah yo this is, it. this is yeah this is the place man Go to the place. Yeah. Everybody. Um, yeah, I would say actually after, I think after all of us like went there, like we all started like getting on top of like our driving a lot mm-hmm. harder. Yeah. Because we saw like, like all their locals consistently like. Yeah. And you're fucking just like, whooping ass. And you're like, oh, oh like, shit. Like, I'm not like, that good. Yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> I need to like step it up. I was like, I'm selling my GS. I'm getting in the truck so I can tell again. Like, I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around. <laughs> like, 
Uh, no more fucking games. Yeah. Like, <laughs> things, like I thought I was good. <laughs> like, I'm not. Yeah, I got, got humbled real good. Yeah. Because I wrote I rode with Naoki in that car that you rolled. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, I go, I got to drive it. So, like, you roll it. I wasn't there for that. We jack up the roof. You guys jack the roof up. Windshield shattered. Then I go drive it. Drive it terrible. I only got like three laps, and I was like, I was scared. It's scary. It's a scary yeah. track. Yeah. And like, I wasn't even that good back then. And it was my first time in right hand drive. Anyway, I'm, I can make all the excuses in the world, but the track is scary. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't even know if I would have gotten comfortable enough to roll the car. Like, <laughs> like Aaron went in, dude. So like, that was a, it was a late. It was a. I'm pretty sure it was a, like a late initiation, and then I'm shooting like towards that that back wall Mm -hmm. and i'm like okay my judgment is that like i'm on the right side of the car but it looks like i got some room so like okay (laughs) maybe maybe i'll just like maybe i'll just like scrape it a little bit and i'll just you know keep on it and keep going um but no uh my judgment of my distance uh was off and uh, i hit it hard enough to where it bounced the rear off and uh rolled it over rolled it over I mean, it drove pretty good for being rolled over. I mean, it was a slow roll. I was probably only going like 15 or, or not, I don't know, maybe not 15 or 20, but I wasn't going that fast when I hit it, I yeah. don't think. Uh, then riding with Naoki in that car, I was like, okay, this is, this is like, I'm, I was like, I suck at drifting. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm not. I'm he's not. in a rolled car and then like, I'm on the straight, like right next to the wall and he's like scraping it with you, with you in the car. Yeah. And I'm just like oh shit yeah he was like on someone's door the whole time mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. i think i was like i was being so fucking cringy dude i was yelling like <laughs> <laughs> i was like yelling all kinds of shit i was just, what were you yelling uh i was like trying to like say like uh segoy but like wrong oh dude it's so like i think back to Damn, it, it like if, if only you had a gopro to it <laughs> um i have phone clips that no one will ever see it because it was real bad <laughs> Yeah, he's he's a cool dude, man. And he gets like he gets excited when you're driving too. He'll like he'll be laughing his ass we off. We were laughing, we're both laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was probably laughing at me fucking up words, but like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when he's when he's in the car, he's I'm pretty sure he's just like laughing at like whatever like dumb extra stuff he's doing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll just like you know drop wheels <laughs> and like I don't know drive where he's not supposed to drive like if, there, if there's a berm he'll just blast right <laughs> over it and he'll just be laughing the whole fucking time like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah that was a good trip we're just like ramming ramming people for fun <laughs> <laughs> uh he bumped somebody when we were like, in in the hatch uh-huh and then he like went and apologized i think because it hit him like kind of hard <laughs> <laughs> but it was sick dude he like threw it in and just like like you know, fucking rear rear quarter panel bumped him. Mm-hmm. You can do that. <laughs> like you can do that. I don't know. It was so yeah. sick. Um, yeah, we hung. I don't know. We got like, I, I, my, my, my best memories with you are, uh, Super D Japan. Um, not at the track. <laughs> <laughs> Partying on Halloween, dude. Halloween in the street, crazy. Yeah, we were like we we're like dancing on top of like a phone booth or, yeah, or something. Electrical box. And uh it was a big party. Yeah, we were big guy in Japan. <laughs> just hovering over everybody, but like dancing and like slash moshing into all these <laughs> into all these small Japanese people. <laughs> I remember you were just like pushing off each other. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> that night was sick for like a bunch of reasons. There's like like every kind of car was out there just be like oh yeah low riders yeah we saw those like hummer h2s on like 30s we saw uh saw that like wide body nsx like do a flyby Mm -hmm. uh just like all kinds of wild and cool shit that night yeah i'm like man uh yeah um i mean i've you know i've gone out for like halloween um you know like partying and stuff but over there it's pretty pretty gnarly yeah people go like all out yeah and they like dress up like like elaborately Mm -hmm. like a lot of people yeah you've gotten to see like a lot of cool stuff within drifting and 
yeah and then like having super d bringing naoki over and seeing the two countries uh collide yeah um that was really cool to see yeah and um i mean you know there's all like There are, you know, multiple sides to drifting, and there are some some people that uh, might not appreciate like the Japanese driving that we do. But I feel like for a lot of people, it sparked something um, after after we had that Super D event. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, appreciated it more, and yeah. and and you know tried to replicate that style yeah and i'm sure there's like i'm sure there's like a lot of pride that came from being a part of like i mean assembling the car that you watch like doing this driving and yeah like all i'm sure a lot of very strenuous evenings trying to get them all ready i think yeah before super d like i didn't sleep for like two or three days like it was just like back to back like getting cars done and then you know, transporting them and then getting the track set up. Um, but yeah, it was a great memory that I, and I was really glad to be a part of. Yeah. And that's why I, I still have a photo up there of uh, Jason, Naoki, and Julian. Um, yeah, that was, that was fucking rad. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a big deal. Um, like you have, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, now now he's coming back to do like Drift Week. And oh it's yeah, like six years after Super D, like it, it like set kind of like a precedent, and like now, like it's a thing. Yeah, like I, for me, for me, it's really interesting because it's like we we all like knew you know like what it was going to be right like i don't think there was like any doubt in like a lot of our minds that he's going to come over and just like like put on a show like yeah yeah. if anything put on a show you know yeah um and it's like it seems like it's like taking i don't know it's like interesting that like now that he's like in d1 and like winning championships and like now there's like I don't know how to say this. <laughs> I gotta be careful with this one. Yeah, yeah tre- tread lightly. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess what I'm saying is like I'm happy to see that like more people are like respecting that driving style because they can see that it's like effective in competition. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. And it's like, oh, so we did know. Like, we saw that and we're like, oh, that's the coolest shit there is. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's what I want to do. And it wasn't because he was winning competitions or like doing anything like, you know, it was just, it was just fucking rad. Yeah. Yeah. And then knowing that like that level can also be applicable to like competition. I think it changes perspective on like what that means. Cause I think at the time, even after super D there was like a lot of like, Oh, well it's just like, you know, just like demolition derby and this and that. And then like, you go watch Naoki just like dominate in D1 mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you, so what are you going to say? Na- what are yeah, you going to say, say now? <laughs> like, like, uh, I don't know. That, that makes me happy that like being able to like spot, like, yo, that's, that's it, you know? And then having, having it get proven I yeah. guess, in competition and you're like, I knew that was it all along. Like, like there's no, <laughs> there's no question. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't think about that too often. Um. But like now that you bring it up, like. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, like, I mean, if you like look back, you're like, oh, I'm just like hanging out with this dude, and he's sick at drifting, but now he's like the champion of Japan. And you're like, all right, well, like, I mean, I feel like it was always known that, like, he had it. I don't. Was, there was a lot of doubt. <clears throat> there was a lot of doubt. I think. Really? Like, I okay, not not with. I would say or maybe maybe it's just because within our circle. Yeah. Um, 
that's kind of we're like like minded. Yeah. I don't know what what are what are people saying now. I don't know. I don't think there's much argument now. Because like, what what is there to say? Like, if you go beat like, what's the system like the, the like, the one that they use in D one? You know, like the oh, like a like a box thing. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. It starts yeah. with a D. Um, but they use it in, like I think they use it in like the Russian drifting series, Russian oh, the Russian drift series mm-hmm. RDS, and it's like, all right, well, like if dude can go like throw it down with this like computer. You know what I mean? Versus just like looking exciting. Mm -hmm. Like obviously there's there's like a lot of levels to the skill. Um, And just like straight up being fast. (laughs) Yeah. Like like you can't argue with the speed. That's all we want to do. Yeah. Be fast and make it look good. Yeah. (laughs) Put a smile on people's faces. Yeah, I think uh, I like to think I'm a, a people pleaser in the right ways. I like to put on a show. Yep, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like there's there's a lot to that. Like, uh, I think maybe that's part of the reason we found that driving style so exciting is like we want to like be exciting, and mm. it's not about like trophies or being like the best. It's about like that was sick. Like, like I want to throw down and like put a smile on people's faces or have them go like, what the fuck? That was crazy. You know? Um, yeah, I think, I think I have that in me. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm chasing for sure. Uh, it's, it's not just about like being number one by any means necessary. It's like, it's like, I want to, I want to leave like an impression. I want people to be like, damn, that was cool. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I'm competitive, but like, if I can have a good time and have a good time with other people, um, that, uh, I don't know, I would say that that's a pretty high priority for me. Um, but maybe, maybe it's because I don't uh, excel in a competition environment as much. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, putting on a good show and having a good time. That's what it's all about. Because if you're not having a good time, why why are you doing this? Yeah. It's uh Don't get in drifting unless you're doing it for fun. Right? I agree. I don't know if there's enough money in it to do it for that reason, but what uh what else is it? Getting chicks? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that shit doesn't work. Yeah, nah. I mean, it can, but like, I don't know. I don't know about the quality. (laughs) (laughs) We're definitely talking shit now. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I think we've had enough beers. (laughs) Um. Yeah. Don't get into drifting. Hey, hey, cut cut the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't get into drifting for chicks. Don't get into drifting for. Well, I mean, I I don't know. Do do it for whatever the reasons you want. But if your expectations is getting girls or <laughs> like respect or fucking, I don't I don't know. Yeah, you're probably not gonna have a good time. Just <laughs> yeah. just do it if you like the act of doing it. That's why I do most things in my life. Yeah. To have to have fun. That's that's why I like work. Yeah. Just so I can afford to have fun. Yeah. Same. That's uh that's my reason for living. Yeah. I I don't want to It's one of those things like especially like if you like you have a business that's related to drifting and mm-hmm. seeing people that track and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's one of those things that's very dangerous where if you like make your business, your hobby, like having it still be fun can be challenging sometimes. Like, how do you deal with that? Mm. 
um i i don't know i felt like just uh i mean when it comes to like me and my clients um in general you're gonna have a better time if you can just communicate with them and uh so that no one has any expectations or manage the expectations so that they're aware of where you are and uh there should be no reason why having my business also be a hobby should be a problem or i don't know what like what else what else would make my Um, hobby oh maybe just enjoying it less because i'm always doing it yeah well, I mean, the first thing that you said is great advice because it's like, yeah, you, you know, like if you keep it real with people and mm-hmm. you, yeah, I'm not you trying won't to, have to like, worry about anything. Yeah, I'm not trying to like get over on anyone. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't know. Um, I'm here to like, if I do work and I just get paid for it. Yeah, that would be so, ideal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be uh, showing up with no personal checks. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to recall what. Uh, not burning out. Like if you're doing it, doing it for your job, and then also doing it for oh uh, fun. Yeah. Um. What? How do I manage that? Oh, I mean, like I have like other hobbies and things too that I enjoy as well. So maybe. That's one way I manage it. I don't get like overwhelmed with car stuff. So it's like if I'm working on someone's car, I'll probably go home or and spend a weekend like away camping or like mountain biking or some something else. So I'm actually I think that's really important. Yeah. Having other hobbies besides drifting. Um I think that's good because you can get overwhelmed and I I agree. Yeah, I think I think having um multiple hobbies and other interests as well is important because being able to hang out and relate to other people outside of drifting is important. Um, and I think that's why, like, me and you vibe because, like, we both obviously like cars and drifting, but, like, even outside of it, like, we don't have to be at a drift event. We'll go out, like, and go drink and hang out. Yeah. You can just um, go eat. Yeah. And it's not like, yeah. So don't be one of those car people <laughs> talking cars every fucking moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, how, even yeah. though that's what we're doing for this whole fucking thing i mean what you want to talk about my viking no <laughs> no not really not 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 right now no what i okay i agree with you having having not just not just like hobbies outside of drifting but like friends outside of drifting to be able to like go and like take a De- break decompress yeah you're like i need, a, I need <laughs> drifting, a break. drifting's kind of intense yeah, you're you like gotta, i need a gotta, break from this shit like, yeah i want to go go to a fucking concert or show or mm-hmm movie i don't care like but you gotta have like i don't know maybe sometimes those drifting friends are your friends that you'll do that stuff with but like being able to like have that it's like really important yeah um yeah we're talking about long-term longevity yeah yeah i think uh i mean even in i think just like life because i'm an expert so listen to me (laughs) (laughs) i'm on a podcast (laughs) Yeah. Like I said, I'm Joe Rogan in this bitch. So listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Take it all literally. <laughs> He's right. Aaron knows it all. <laughs> uh uh-huh. What um so like You've been you've been you're around in like the early days of like Northern California drifting. I mean, I know there's OGs before you or whatever, but mm-hmm. um, 
you you were there you were there for Altamont. Altamont went away. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I mean, obviously, like Thunderhill started, and there's had, Thunderhill. Oh, there's Thunderdrift. Yeah, uh, ran by Jeff Pitts, the homie. Yep. And then there was um, Marina Drift. Wasn't which, there, like, oh, uh, it, was, it was Marina Drift. No, Marina Drift was the one in Monterey. Oh, okay. And then and then um, then it got turned into Drift Central. Hmm. So that, yeah, I, I went there for my birthday I think back in the day, like 2010. Um, but yeah, there was th- those events. And then, yeah, Thunder Hill was, Thunder Hill and Thunder Drift were the events that I drove a lot in, in that era. Did you do a lot of like the full track events back in the day? Uh, I wouldn't say a lot. I did a lot of, I would say I did more skid pad, but I still drove, um, yeah, I drove like, Thunder Hill East in a KA240, which, <laughs> which, like, which kind of sucks. Which is insane. <laughs> I think, like, yeah, I think a lot of the, like, OGs in NorCal driving Thunder Hill East with, like, KAs is, like... Yeah, that's, that's like, what we did. That's, like, the most mind-blowing thing to me. Like, There's a lot of clutch kicks going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're talking, like, I don't know, like, in, in my car with, the, like, 391 and zf transmission i'm in like fourth like for like a lot of the track oh wow and you're like you're thinking about like trying to link those corners with a k oh like, linking hell hell no <laughs> i'd just be stoked if i get like a good turn <laughs> by charging hard enough <laughs> <laughs> but that was like that was a thing but i don't know like that was pretty like gnarly back then yeah i mean because you know skid pad is cool but like you want to picture of your car on a skid pad or do you want it on a racetrack true. So, super true um yeah driving driving a racetrack was really cool yeah and a track like that is like i mean we only get to drive like a couple times a year now so mm-hmm. like i can't imagine i can't not i cannot imagine trying to drift thunder hill east with a k like nak dude yeah it's asking a lot yeah there's a couple there's a couple turns I feel like 10, 10 and 11 are were the ones that we enjoyed with lower power. Yeah. You know, like come down the hill. Mm-hmm. And uh, what else? Yeah, I feel like those were the, I feel like the comps back then at like Thunder Drift were focused on those turns too. That's not where Kato rolled his Corolla? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember if I was there for that. Damn, Cotto. I would like to see him driving again. I saw a picture of him and his family dressed up as Team Rocket for Halloween. <laughs> it was like a family thing. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, is there anyone... Yeah, like how many people from that like original time when you were drifting and going to like Thunder Drift are still driving? Like, is it like a handful? Like, is it like half? Is it like... Five percent, <laughs> huh? I don't think too much about statistics of <laughs> drifting. <laughs> Fair enough. But if I'm gonna ballpark it, huh? By all means, ballpark it. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to ballpark it if you don't know. You don't know. I'll but. say like thirty to forty percent are that's, still driving. That's the thing. Like, I think because it was there were so few people doing it back then. It's like they're all still kind of doing it because it was so it was like so hard to find and get into like Mm -hmm. a lot of those people stuck with it it seems because that's like kind of a big number is it yeah i mean that's like that's a decent amount of people okay maybe i'm maybe i'm over exaggerating that i don't know i I mean i mean there's still definitely like a lot of people that i like know that are around yeah I gotta use the bathroom. Sure. <laughs> Number one highest grossing podcast in the US of A. That is not this one. It will be after this fucking episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a question. Okay, so like you said that you you were in high school when you swapped a motor mm-hmm. in your Mark III my drive, yeah, my driveway. Yeah, like, did did you learn how to work on cars from like family members or like? 
my dad knew how to do like basic stuff, but uh, I, yeah, I guess it's mostly like either like self-taught or like friends along the way would show me. Yeah, I, I never went to, or no, I did go to formal automotive school uh, at College of Alameda. I think I took like a, like brakes and chassis class or something like yeah. that. Um, but I think that's as far as that went. And then everything else, I learned along the way just like didn't want to didn't want to pay someone to do it so I learned how to do it myself I think that's a lot of us in drifting I don't think yeah. you can like I don't think you there's can. some people that are like some people that work on their own cars and do it all right and then there's other there are others that are not good at working on cars and probably shouldn't <laughs> yeah but everyone, I mean, everyone should have their shot. Yeah, give it a shot. Do your thing. I definitely should not have been working on cars when I started. Yeah, dude. But you've come a long way, dude. Yeah, I've come a long way. <laughs> I have fucked some shit up. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's all part of it, I guess. Luckily, there's people like you who like know drifting and know like what to do and how to set cars up and stuff. Like that's important. Yeah, like more or less. Yeah, more or less. Um, I'm not the utmost authority, but no, but who is? I have a, I have a running, driving car. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah, like what? What was it? Where I can't. Was I going with this? Or first of all, I can't imagine that you swapped a car. Like I can't imagine like swapping a motor in high school, like in my driveway, like that. I don't think I would have been able to do that. So. Like, how did you, like, decide? You're just like, this thing needs to be turbo. Well, I, I mean, growing up, I always liked Supras. And then I got one, and it was cool. But I was like, it's not a turbo, man. <laughs> yeah. Give me a fucking turbo. The 7 MG is kind of weak. Yeah. The GT was tight. Yeah. I mean, people <laughs> always talk shit on them. But, like, I don't know. That thing was a tank. Yeah. Like, torque the head studs, and you're good. Yeah, dude. yeah. People always talk trash on them, but it's like do do a head gasket and torque it, and uh, it'll it'll run just fine. Yeah, that was that was cool. Um, what was that like? Did you you just decided you're like, all right, I found one of the junkyard. Yeah, I think I, I think I told my dad, and I was like, hey, there's like, I saw at the junkyard there's a turbo one, and it's I think it was like crashed, so motor's good. The odds are yeah. the motor's good. And so I, yeah, I think I went there with my uncle and helped me pull it. And, uh, and you just, yeah, it, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's like now, like if I were to do that today, it would take me like a day to, yeah. to do a motor swap. Yeah. It's, I'm pretty sure it took me like a week or two to, <laughs> to, to get it all done. But, uh, you know, I was in high school. Cut me some slack. Yeah, I mean, a week's pretty good, honestly. I feel like there's like a lot of cars that have been on jack stands for six months and they're not in high school. Yeah, I don't like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drive your cars. Uh, Get it back on the road. Yeah. Um, We're bringing the Pandora Motorsports. And <laughs> yeah. I'll get it back on the road for you. Well, you, you let it sit on jack stands for too long, you're going to lose motivation and then yeah. it's just going to get worse and worse. So just get it done yeah and yeah and if you can't then uh take it to me and i will get it done in a timely manner uh yeah are you so like okay that was like your was that like your first did you work on cars when you were like younger or was that like that was um, like your first undertaking you're like i'm gonna i'm gonna do this motor swap because i want a turbo uh i mean like I did like little dump like my dad had like an Integra and I bought like eBay intake for it. Sick. So I installed that. And then uh yeah, I guess things just kind of escalated and eventually I mean I would help my friends with with their cars too. And looking back there's a lot of sketchy things we did. <laughs> like um uh Yousef had a fc and we were trying to remove the diff from it to put in another diff i think and for whatever reason we couldn't get it out and so we decided to sh put straps around the diff and use a car to pull the diff out <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I don't know why. But I'm so glad that we survived that. Because that was... Did it come out? Yeah, I mean, it must have. We, we got his car driving, but like... Very not smart things that we did. But we're here. We made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've... You no, have a story. You have a story like that? No, I never try to rip a diff out with another car. Yeah, God, I, <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a while. But like, hey man, that's but, not smart. No, not really. <laughs> but, but I make these mistakes, <laughs> so you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> learn from learn from Aaron's mistake. Um, yeah. yeah. So you, I mean, I don't know you. You went, yeah, you like you went to college, got a degree, and then you're like. Nah, I'm fucking work on cars. Yeah, I uh I I think I wanted to have a degree and my parents really wanted me to have a degree. Mm-hmm. Um so I went to school. Initially I went to my school for uh aviation's be- aviation because I figured that's the closest thing to what I wanted to do which was like work on cars or or just work on mechanical things so i went to san jose state for their aviation program so i could work on planes um but the program director um i think like i don't halfway into my first year like screwed up the program whoa um it was like a new director and i think she fucked it up and so i think like yeah halfway through my first year They cut the program, but I was still like doing my undergrad classes. Um, so then I decided, like, okay, well, I'll just like hop into business because that could apply to anything. And uh, took a bunch of business classes, and then finally they, I don't, I don't remember how long it took, but they brought the aviation program back, and I was like, almost done with (laughs) business. So I was like, I'm just gonna finished with a business degree and uh and get out of here and i uh yeah then i did that and worked outside for a little bit i just like worked for um like a courier service like delivery driving like box trucks and stuff yeah did that for like a year or two and then and then i decided to open my first shop with my friend yeah how long ago was that? Like ten years? Oh uh, yeah, that's like ten years ago. Damn. Um, and Self-employed for ten years, pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I I survived for all of that. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not easy. No. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that much. No. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, a lot of people want to do it, but it's definitely not not a simple thing. No. I mean, you guys were, yeah, you were doing, like, a lot of stuff, like... Yeah, many things. Importing, like, I'm sure that's, like, has its challenges, like, maintaining, you know, like, building cars, like, Mm -hmm. maintaining cars, like, that's a lot of different things to to deal with. Yeah, and then we were, like, buying and selling cars. Yeah, you're also importing parts for a while. Yeah, so, like, a lot of octopusing. Yeah. Um... Um, which is why I'm at a point now where at my new shop, I want to kind of just focus a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and on service and, uh, you know, maintenance and performance. Um, but eventually maybe I would take someone on and start importing cars and parts again. Yeah. I think, um, if, if it makes sense, I would, I would like to do that because that was fun. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, like, are all the parts depleted now? I don't know. Yeah, man. I think about that a lot. I'm like, how much used shit is there? Like, <laughs> I don't think the. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just like you know, all the cars are running out too, because yeah. every, everyone's like doing it now. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know if if it makes sense. Um, that would be cool. That was that was fun. I think having all the. Cool what was the Japanese What was the coolest stuff? car you imported? coolest car was uh r32 gtr um with a big old 
uh t67 Ooh, turbo okay um it was making like i don't know five or six hundred um and it was like it was nice it was well done too it was clean it was on like te's damn um yeah like probably one of the faster cars i've driven yeah i guess that was kind of cool you get to import the cars you get to drive them around yeah yeah i never i never like beat on them but like yeah I would see how fast they go. Yeah, feel it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, was it like driving a five, six hundred horsepower R32 through like Oakland? <laughs> Oakland pothole ridden streets? Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of sketchy. And like, you know, there's, there's a lot of money. Like, yeah. That you, that yeah, you're taking it easy. Yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, I would, yeah, I would get on it, but I wouldn't like. Yeah, I wouldn't rip it like yeah. hard as yeah. as much as I would my own cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a big turbo. Like I'm gonna find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see what that the tuner did over there? How it feels? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, definitely. Like receiving a container full of used parts is probably a lot of work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unload uh, like. Unloading it, taking inventory, putting it, finding a place to put all this stuff in a yeah. relatively small shop. Yeah. It's not not easy. Um, but yeah, had had a lot of friends come and help. So that was that was nice. I appreciate you guys. Uh, what's it like? Uh, what was it like? Like picking out stuff to bring here that was cool i think that um you know it's kind of like a shopping spree and uh yeah yusuf would always help me with that and he knew all like the he knew like you know he knew like enough japanese so he knew what like keywords to type in to find like the yeah. good stuff yeah that was fun yeah we would just he would uh like all right we're gonna buy this <laughs> buying that. yeah i mean like i had my desk set up and he was set up like couple feet away from me and he'd just be like hey check this out like yeah 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 and we'd be like oh shit buy it like, <laughs> yeah yeah we would, we would go ham we would we would just buy a lot of buy a lot of good things on yahoo but yeah i don't know are those days over uh, of like finding like, like finding like good deals on yahoo i know it's like inflation really high like stuff's cheaper but it's like in, it's still like expensive in Japan, but I think just because the dollar's strong, it's okay. Oh, but it's yeah. like it's not. It's still like kind of. It's they've like made shit. I think they've. Ca- I think they've expensive. caught. They've caught on that. Like, hey, these people are like bumping everything up. Yeah. Um. So we're just gonna have to like buy new shit now, I guess. Yeah, that's cool too. I, I mean, I could. I would. I would like to just import like cool japanese brands that we like yeah definitely hmm is that gonna be future future business endeavors uh i think so i think there's a a decent likelihood yeah i think there's a good market for it Mm mm-hmm People want cool stuff. Yeah, who's like who? Who's bringing over cool stuff uh, these days? I don't know. It's, it's not like it's not like the old days where like it'd be like, oh yeah, I got this steering wheel for like twenty bucks. Like, um, yeah. I mean, like just going to like Up Garage. I went to Up Garage with you guys. Oh yeah. I still like. There's uh, still there's still cool stuff, man. Yeah. And it was it was like I got like a real like a super cool steering wheel for like sixty bucks or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think like the prices of the used stuff has gone up so much because like uh, in Japan, I think that for a while like used stuff was really not. It's just like whatever. Yeah, they're like, this is used. Why would I want this? Yeah, like, up garage is like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. It's like the thrift shop, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. But now you have like I don't know like thrifting's popular and you have like the resellers and it's like oh yeah you'll buy a T-shirt that's like more than it was new mm-hmm. instead of like for two dollars which like 
does it defeat the purpose a little bit of like thrifting? I mean, it's still unique, but like you go buy an eighty dollar t shirt that some grandpa wore for fucking I know, ten. I know years. my ass ain't gonna buy that. <laughs> <laughs> and so like that's kind of the same thing with like the JDM parts. It's like like the use J like I know mm-hmm. some of it's cool and if you're trying to build your car like period correct and have yeah. some unique shit, like I get it, but it's like I don't know. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break myself just to have Yeah. But that's me. Yeah. I mean I and there's I love me some Duffies, but like man, them prices are getting crazy. <laughs> Fine. Do you, man? I've been doing these. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what else is on the docket, Palmer? Man. What you got for me? I don't know. I'm pretty impressed that you like put this ways together in a month. Thank you. That's um very impressive, man. Yeah. I like to I feel like I'm I'm good with my time. And I yeah, I wanted to hit the ground running. So yeah, just kind of been have been planning this and lined everything up so it kind of work out that uh it, yeah, it would take me like roughly a month to get all the equipment and yeah everything in yeah now i'm just waiting on like licensing stuff and then i can be open to the public and everything bureaucracy bureaucracy is a bitch but (laughs) i'm well trained in jumping through hoops yeah i've seen it (sighs) yeah it's cool that uh i don't know it's cool shop getting like Making moves. You got like <laughs> ten years of experience. You've been around drifting for like what, like almost twenty years now. A long time. Yeah. I uh, I was just talking to my friends about it the other day that uh, I was uh, I was talking to my like eBay rep, and uh, they they had reminded me that I have had my eBay account for twenty years. Damn. Yeah. So like when I was. 15 or something yeah i guess that's when i opened my ebay account i'm pretty sure like i convinced my dad to be like hey i, I need this to like buy car parts or something. <laughs> like i need this intake for your integrity yeah yeah ex- exactly <laughs> what it's <laughs> like all right the that was like that was like the days of like dial up yeah i like remember like having dial up logging in down <laughs> down and fucking going on eBay and, and searching for porn. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the internet. <laughs> car car parts and porn. <laughs> That's, I mean, what else? What, what did you use your computer for? Dude, I, yeah, I used to download like the drift videos on like Kazaa and shit. Kazaa and LimeWire? Yeah. When Kazaa was first, right? Yeah, Kazaa was first. Destroying, destroying the family computer. <laughs> hell yeah i wrecked i wrecked that shit <laughs> yeah. but i guess it taught me how to fix it too <laughs> true i was like i should probably get like an antivirus or something and then like you'd like run the antivirus and it'd be like all the shit that you downloaded from kazaa it'd just be like all the stuff <laughs> you're like all right we gotta get rid of this <laughs> <laughs> like oh it's fine like but i like that song fuck <laughs> <laughs> i watched the netflix Netflix show on uh what was his name? The the, the uh Napster guy? No, not Napster guy, the um the internet security guy. Fuck what oh, was his name? John McAfee or McAfee? Yeah. Did you watch that? No, but uh You should watch it. It's pretty it's, interesting. He's that like out of a, his mind, huh? That dude's a fucking character. <laughs> like it's it's entertainment. I remember I was at work like Four year, four or five years ago, and my boss was like, "Yo, John McAfee just said he cut his dick off if Bitcoin doesn't hit a hundred thousand dollars." <laughs> and I was like, "Who?" And he's like, "The guy that makes like McAfee antivirus or whatever it's called." Yeah. And I'm like, "What? <laughs> he's gonna cut his dick off if it doesn't hit a hundred thousand dollars?" He didn't, obviously, but I think we should hold. Or didn't he like die or something? I don't know. Is he still alive? I gotta watch it, dude. I heard it was wild. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I would, I would recommend watching it. That's like an unhinged human being. 
He's like, yeah, I made this antivirus and I'm just going to go fucking nuts because I'm rich now. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's like the thing to do. Just go nuts like, when you're rich. I mean, they just like, ball, like finally make it. And uh, look at Elon Musk, dude. He walked into Twitter with a sink. Did you see that video? No. Elon Musk walked into Twitter with a sink. With like a sink, like a sink. Why? And his caption was, let this sink in. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Is, you get you rich for too long, man. You start you start like being on a different planet. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Like Bezos, you see that guy? He's just like partying, like I don't know, I don't know. Beefing with beefing with fucking uh DiCaprio or whatever. Like I don't know. No, All those no. rich like, Yeah, dude, imagine just being like the fuck Leonardo DiCaprio because he like took a picture with his like wife or girlfriend or something. I don't know. I don't that's know. that's some next level shit. Maybe we're just not there there yet. So yeah, we got a ball. So we just got a ball out. We got so a ball can, and just go crazy. So we can act a fool. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Come down to Pandora Motorsports, spend all your money, so and help me act, act a fool. fool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know, dude. That'd be cool though. I don't, do your other podcasts like? Do we be plugging like this? No, not usually. Not usually. No, I'm just. Mm. Well, we're here, so <laughs> Oakland, California. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> yeah. Um. Don't be scared. We're in a a decent business park. It's in a gated. A gate. It's in a gated business park. But if I am working on your car. More than likely, it will be stored inside Aaron's of my al- alarmed facility. Aaron's also got your back if anything goes down. Yeah. Town I'm, business. I'm down, I'm down to ride. Woo. All right. Yeah. So, yep. dude. Yep. Um. Man, I don't know. Is, do I start asking you questions? Do you want to? I don't know if I'm a good questioner. Try it. What about we? What about I ask you about? What are your your life goals? What are my life goals? Fuck. It can, um, you can be be as uh, broad or general as you'd like, or or be specific if you want. Uh, man, this is gonna sound super lame, but like I'm just trying to find fucking peace, man. Whoa, I really am. I'm trying to. That's find, important. If yeah. you uh, it's I feel like it's it's hard to get anything done if you are if you are not at peace. Yeah, I'm trying to find so, peace, but I also like I'm trying to help you find it too. Thanks, dude. Uh, I feel like you're like pretty good at that. So, yeah. Thanks. I I think I think so too. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, yeah, having oh. a positive mentality is important. Yeah, I mean, like some stability is good, but like also some, you know, some chaos some, is good some, sometimes. Some dazzle, dazzle. You know, you can't be like too fucking boring. And no, have nothing no, you going can't on. be too. Fucking vanilla. Especially especially <laughs> especially me, man. Like you say vanilla. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh shit. We're we're in that time where you gotta be careful. No, I mean like uh where like where do where do what it do, I wanna make people laugh. Me too. I wanna I wanna I wanna spread I wanna spread positivity. Damn, I like that. Same. I want to spread positivity. I want to make people laugh. I want to have a good fucking time. And, uh, you know, like, I don't really want to, you know, I mean, s- struggle builds character and shit, but, like, I feel like I've built you, a lot you, of character. You, you done with your character building? I feel like I've built a lot of character. So, <laughs> like, I'm trying to just enjoy shit for a yeah, while. Yeah, man. Um, But, like, goals, like... I don't know, business wise, like whatever. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of like what uh, you've done with podcasts. Yeah, and like just goodest in general. Yeah, and, like 
I'm happy to like put stuff out that people like have it be merch or the podcast or whatever, like my driving, like it's big, yeah. making people laugh. Like those, are, like I like to put things out that people are like, I, I want people to like enjoy my, the things that I like to do. I yeah. guess. I don't know. I mean, like I, I'd never thought I'd be on a podcast, but here, here I am with oh. you. Plus, we want to we want to bring the homies up. That's another goal of mine. Like always, like yes, we look there's out. For, a, there's enough for for all of us. So yeah. bring the homies up. Make sure everybody's taken care of. Or if you can help somebody, like you know, like we. Yeah, I will. I will always help if I can. Yeah, and look out for your people, and they'll look out for you. That's that's it. And like, I don't know, money wise. <laughs> I don't we really don't. Care. We don't have to talk about money. I don't really care that much. It helps. Yeah, it helps because, like, <laughs> I mean, like building a stupid drift car like costs a lot of money. So, like, I need money for that. But like, my goal, my goal is to, my goal is to make money without uh, negatively affecting other people. That's always been my goal. And like, if I can do that, then I'm, I'm happy with that. The peace thing is like an internal struggle that I'll figure out. But like. You know, working on that. Yeah. Sooner than later. Because once you tackle that, then you can do the other things better. Yeah, and I'm making a lot of progress. What are your goals, dude? Oh, now you're going to just <laughs> swing it back on me. I think I said in the podcast earlier, my, my goals are relatively simple. Um, I just want to... Uh, be able to afford to live the lifestyle that I want, uh, traveling, uh, being able to afford the hobbies that I'd like, and just like, you know, having a house with my lady um, and, a, and a dog. Damn. Actually, I already have a dog. Yeah. Um, a house. Uh, a a good, smoothly running business. Mm. Um, some fun cars. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. Oh, I'd like to have children. Oh, two. Okay. And uh, do they have to go to college? No. Um. <laughs> no, they don't. But my what I would tell them is that they don't have to go to college, but uh, do what you want to do well. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. I think is is you can you can find a way to make a living um, in many different ways. It doesn't have to be college, um, but it is. I guess college is a good fallback to have a degree. But, um, yeah, I think it's more important to just be good at what you do. Yeah, and, take pride uh, in it. Take pride in your work and don't try to do too many things because then you'll just be mediocre at a lot of things. Yeah, that, that's my that's my take. I think focusing and uh, focusing on a you know a couple a couple of. Uh, hobbies or interests will produce better results than uh, doing too many things. I and, agree. And losing focus. I agree. I think like finding the finding the things that you're like really into are important, and like hold, like holding people from those is actually very negative. What do you mean? Holding? Like, like if you if okay, so. Uh, if someone finds something that they're passionate about and uh -huh. I'm telling them they shouldn't be doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some. Well, yeah, there are, cer there are certain right. things probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if someone finds joy in something, I guess it would be better to be supportive of it. Yeah. You got any more questions for me? Are you going to interview me now? Just just knowing that I'm probably gonna ask you the same question back, so you gotta be careful.
with this podcast, uh-huh. um, you are currently happy with this growth, and um, that that was a question. But also, where can you see this going, and how would you like to see it go? Um, I'm definitely happy with the growth. I don't really know where it's gonna go. Um, I'm just. Like, it kind of goes back to my goals of, like, making people laugh and, like, trying to, like, give back something. <laughs> but also, like, is it, you know, do I look at it as, like, a business? Like, I would say, like, yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I also, like, enjoy doing them. Like, I enjoy putting people's voices out there that, like, people might not necessarily see. Mm-hmm. Um, like, where is it going to go? Like, I don't know. Should I have gone to SEMA and like walked around with my stats and been like, hey, do you want to sponsor the podcast? I like thought about it this week because everyone's in SEMA and I'm just like kind of weird also, though. And I'm like, "Ah," but it's like, well, you know, it's like does well in the rankings and shit. And I can be like, look at me. Like, I'm right here. Yeah. X, Y, Z. Like, I'm, you know, I'm your guy. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, fucking O'Reilly sponsor me or whatever. You know, (laughs) like, like, (laughs) like, give me that quit my job money, you know, but then it's like, I don't know. Does that kind of like take the take the fun out of it? Does it take the soul out of it? Does it take the fun out of it? Like, I don't know. So I think about that. Like, do you want to be selling out? Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, I definitely struggle with like, should I be chasing more like um, people that draw a bigger audience to the podcast just because I know it will help like, oh, my getting it out there more and mm -hmm. stuff like that and it's like i kind of i would rather stay in your lane (laughs) nah not stay in my lane but just like (laughs) i like i want i want to have the people who i think are interesting on and so like there are people who are like popular who i also think are interesting Uh uh-huh and it's like i gotta like i gotta figure out how to get like past feeling like i'm bothering those people to have them do the podcast well if you know they I mean? you're bothering them then they wouldn't do it right that's true so yeah you're thinking you think in the wrong mentality if yeah they, man if they want to do it then i know then you're not bothering them that's a good point if they don't then so um, be it. where can it go i don't know we're just doing episodes and putting them out people you know like i try and get them out like as often as i can like been dealing with life stuff when they go, they're going out like a little less frequent than they used to, mm-hmm. but like I, I definitely cool. have Maybe plans. Maybe people will favor it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to make the best of it, and I don't. It's not something that I want to stop doing. No, you're not trying to make the best of it. You're trying to make the goodest of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm definitely trying to like. Yeah, I'm just I'm I don't I don't plan on like stopping doing this anytime soon, even if it's like a financial thing or whatever. Like like it's something I enjoy doing and I like having people like have something that they like. Yeah. I'm I mean like to be honest, I'm not like a huge podcast person. Yeah. Um but I don't know. M- maybe this will spark my interest more to like listen to more podcasts um probably not (laughs) probably probably not (laughs) yeah i don't know um i think i i tried listening to podcasts but maybe i was not listening to the right ones because i would you know like i'd have like a long drive to the track and i would try to listen to a podcast and like I was, I was with my buddy and he was like oh yeah let's, let's let's listen to a podcast and he puts on a podcast about like like space travel and you're just like Bro, and, and my mind man. just like got melted and i'm just like i don't know i can't i'm trying to drive and i just can't grasp what i'm hearing and it's kind of making me sleepy the guy has like a nice like deep voice that's like putting me to sleep and i just i couldn't do it um yeah they're not for everybody I and mean, my and my commute is like five minutes to here so yeah, like wait. i don't have what um I, a lot of people listen to shit in their shops but like really yeah 
Oh, I'm I'm like a music person. I'm a music person, but also um I have uh I'm not good at multitasking. You can't like listen to like I'll be like playing video games or something and like my girlfriend would be like talking to me and uh yeah it just sounds like wah, wah, wah. like i like it doesn't register in yeah it's my called brain. adhd <laughs> is, <laughs> is that what i got maybe maybe not i don't know um i'm not a psychiatrist but i'm just not good at multitasking so i get it um like if i'm working on a car I'll, i just want like some background music I, yeah i don't know if i'll be like saying yeah palmer's voice yeah talking about drifting while i'm in the middle of doing wiring you don't want to listen to me anyway bro (laughs) (laughs) um i'm pretty bad at multitasking too but i can listen to podcasts while at work oh really Mm -hmm. Hmm. it depends on what i'm doing though like if i'm working with my hands yeah but if i'm on the computer like i just don't hear the what i'm listening like i don't hear the like them talking anymore i'm just like reading I can't like read and listen at the same time. Yeah, I I cannot for sure. Yeah. For sure. Some people can. Should fucking it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I got too much like I got fucking blinders on like I'm just like whatever is in front of me is what is happening right now. Not what you're asking me about the future. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you have, you've only been here a month but you already have a succulent on your table. Yeah, it's doing doing pretty good. Well, um, yeah, it's actually like a healthy succulent. It's not even like yeah. I got I got I um I have a. It's not living up to its name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right next to my casting couch. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be black leather, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll work, I'll work on it. We'll get you a black leather couch. Don't you worry. I'm working my way up. I, I can only afford cloth right now, so <laughs> I need some customers so I can afford a leather couch. <laughs> this <laughs> this setup, if someone drove by, would be like, yo, is he doing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, is Aaron finally doing porn? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Business must not be good. <laughs> Yeah, I like the I like all this glass right here. Yeah, that's cool. Like a, we're we're an aquarium. People are just watching, gonna be watching us. Yeah, anyone who drives by just sees this going down. Like, oh shit, I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> um, is so this is is this what uh, your other podcast guest episodes been like? Where we talk about casting couches and. The guest doing porn. Yeah, yeah. Usually, tight. Want to be on, on point with this. They're all weird. Uh, <laughs> I, I was, I wasn't sure if I was like close to talking. I mean, you're good. You're good. All right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll fix it later. Bump me up. Yeah, don't worry. Um. Yeah. So, what kind of like? What kind of builds are you planning on doing here? Are you like, ooh, do I let that, do I let that cat out the bag? I mean, you can you can keep your secrets. I just, um, no, I just uh, I want to, I want to make um more vehicles with. K A T S. Okay. And like K twenties and K twenty four Honda motors. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up with uh, a lot of Hondas and stuff, and Honda engines are fucking great. Yep. Um. Uh, so, and they're very plentiful, well designed engines, and I think that's kind of the future for a lot of motorsports type applications because of what they're capable of and for their price point. Mm -hmm. And I think with, I don't know, I've, it feels like SRs, SRs and Jay-Z's are kind of getting depleted. Yeah. But here in the U S we have, you know, the, all these cars came with KAs and, uh, 
you know, like Nacho. It's got like a fucking rocket K A T. Yeah. Makes like five five twenty five twenty seven. Yeah. Um, so I've I've kind of I don't know if it's just like the, the He warped he warped the head on it the first time. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, I think it's the practical side of me that's saying, hey, there's a bunch of these engines in the US because that's what they came with. And there's all features that I like about it, like like cast iron block yeah. and the heads. Uh the head does not have lifters that fly out. <laughs> not like I've not like I've ever had that issue, but like it's a thing, like right? Yeah. They'd be flying out. I mean, I don't know if I've ever been to a drift event that didn't have somebody who threw rockers on their SR. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was that was okay, that was an exaggeration, but like Yeah, it's probably maybe, maybe like, like maybe half and half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so Damn, hating on SRs is, is gonna be an unpopular episode. I'm just kidding. I mean, I I, I love SRs. Yeah. Um but I mean, yeah, like I, I've never, I've had, I've had SRs and I've never threw a rocker. Yeah. But it's I, a thing that happens. I didn't so throw like one on mine either. One way, you know, that's just one thing to um, not have happen. Um, so I think, yeah, I think KAs are good because of that. And they're, you know, relatively strong and plentiful. Yeah. Which I think is important. And finding parts for them is pretty pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, so I think those are the two, you know, principles. I'm not like an engine expert, but like KATs and the K20 series motors are pretty plentiful in these parts. Yeah. In these gear parts. <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, I grew up with like a lot of Honda guys, so I have friends that are well-informed on the Honda game. Yeah. So I want to do, I want to build up and I, and yeah, I've, I've like, I've always like my dad's Integra was kind of like one of my first cars to with the B series. And like, I, I like those engines. They sound great and they make a lot of power for, for what they are. Yeah. So, once I get the business um, in a nice place where I'm comfortable with a good rhythm, I kind of want to start focusing on, uh, you know, building a lot of either like Nissan or uh, Toyota chassis with with the Honda motors. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah, and so pairing them with with a good transmission. Yeah, it's definitely the future. I think so. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see what like other motors pop up. That yeah, are like let's make this rear wheel drive, and you're like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, the only yeah the only shitty thing is that um, the price point to get into, like the engine itself is cheap, yeah. but getting that into the chassis is like where it's pricey. Yeah, like, you know you got to do like the water lines, the oil pan, and you know, manifold, number, intake, manifold. and exhaust. Yeah, just like, so you're it, like oh, it's fuck. a lot. But but when you do have it done, like, you know, if it does blow, like, oh, throw throw another one in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I have a. Did I tell you I have an S13 hatch? No, or I guess that was kind of a secret. Anyway, well, I have an S13 hatch. Uh, where'd you get it from, Sam? Oh wait, is it what color is it? It's the it's the blue and silver one. Blue it's the and weird sil- two tone hat. Oh yeah, I yeah I, I know the previous owner of that one. Yeah. So okay, so it's just a shell. It's just a shell. I don't have a motor in it yet, and I'm not I'm not like at a point where I can put a motor in it. Uh huh. But uh, I'm like yeah, I've been like thinking, you know, I'm like obviously I would love to put an SR in it, but that's not really like realistic right now. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm like, well, do I put a KA in it and turbo the KA? Or do I do like an NAK series? Like, there's like, it's, it's yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, NAK series would 
oh that would still be pretty damn fun to drive yeah mm-hmm. and so it's like i'm like okay well it's like the cost difference like what's a what's a turbo k cost like you gotta buy it like a k like complete like with transmission the, motor this, set this, is like this market that's like it's like a thousand for the motor more, bro. A thousand for the motor with and... the transmission it's like loot really yeah or like 1500 bucks yeah or more i don't know that's not bad yeah and then i guess turboing it is probably not turboing bad. is pretty cheap it's just the <laughs> yeah. work of it yeah which is fine and also that's just like kind of a roll of the dice too yeah you're like is this gonna last <laughs> yeah yeah uh but maybe i talk to the kat poppy tulo fucking nacho and see what's up yeah so that you know, I mentioned that I want to have another Supra, and then I take this JC out, put yeah. it in my Supra. Then what would I put in here? Yeah, maybe like a KA or a K series would be cool. I would I would almost rather do an NAK series because then I can have it like rev super high. That'd be tight. Yeah, I mean it depends. I guess well depends which model you'd want to do or it's cheaper to get like an Accord or a CRV engine than like RSX. RSX. Or, yeah. yeah, RSX is K twenty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then there's the next version, which is like the FK eight Civic Type R that has like three hundred horsepower. Stuff. Yeah, that would be tight. Yeah, but those when, when I think those are those? those those are a lot more complex though. I think the computers yeah. and stuff. And also, can, like, can you buy those as like a crate motor? Yeah. Yeah. So but that's that expensive. Cost? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't recall. I forget. What I just need to go buy like a fucking crash one on Copart. Yeah, I think the the issue. One of the issues is finding a ECU because they're like pretty complex. Hmm. But I don't. Let's figure it out. Yeah, because that's like reliable power. Reliable power. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'd be a cool swap. And they sound really cool. And they make a bunch of power. I need... Well... Are they reliable at high RPM, though? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Do they like rev limiter? Yeah, man. It's a fucking Honda. <laughs> Fair enough. Honda's the best. Yeah, so would you go K or K series? It depends. Am I like am I projecting for the future or am I just gonna just I don't know. That that's up to you. I know. So I haven't I haven't thought that far because this engine is still in my car and probably will be driving with it for a while. Yeah. Um but it's something it's something that's on my mind in in the future. I do love my Jay Z. It's been like nothing but good to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like I think about like going, I don't know, like a beam, like a beam setup would be cool. But in your car? No. Oh, oh in the S S chassis. Uh, they're like really expensive now, though. I don't know if I would really? go beam. Yeah. Huh. I don't I don't know too much about beams, but I think they're cool. Yeah, like a beams turbo would be kind of sick. Yeah. I mean it's kind of an SR ish. Yeah. It's like sim similar. They have titanium valves. So that's tight. No, that's not. <laughs> I mean Dude, lightweight. I think well, I think don't those wear out really quick? I don't know. I'm just I'm just naming the only thing I know about the beams. Uh, <laughs> I feel oh, before when I was like riding dirt bikes and stuff, I had I rode a Honda, and I think the valves were either made of like magnesium or titanium, and so you had to replace them a lot more often than like Yamahas, mm. because Yamahas had just like steel or something. And for me. I uh, I prefer to drive instead of like working on cars, even though that's kind of your job, my job, your but, life. 
<laughs> yeah, but I, I would honestly rather, yeah, I'd rather be driving it, right? No one wants to work on their car at the track. Hail to the no. <laughs> that's that's the worst. Yeah. Paid all this money to work on your car <laughs> yeah. in, in the in the fucking heat <laughs> Dude. of Thunder Hill or I just it was like a hundred degrees at Thunder Hill and my car started breaking up and I was like, I'm going home. <laughs> like, I don't want to <laughs> you, do you just called it? No, I didn't oh, go okay. home. I fucking I ended up melting a spark plug. Oh like, shit. It like cracked the the a ceramic? Uh, yeah, the ceramic cracked and then it tried to weld itself to the head. Oh fuck. That was cool. What 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 caused that? I don't know. Maybe maybe I needed to change my spark plug sooner. Huh. I have it in my forerunner, I'll show it to you. Mm. <laughs> you can look at it. <laughs> it uh it took a lot to get that spark plug out, let me tell you. Did it come out like clean? Kind of. I you, put I put new spark plugs in it. It's good to go, dude. <laughs> I was really. You don't scared. have any like heating issues anymore, right? Mm, no, it still gets pretty hot. Oh, really? I can heat soak it. If, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, Are you running eighty five? Yeah. Oh, I thought that doesn't that help with. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I got like I I'm I think that I might have like head gasket issues, and I'm just like I've been like trying everything to keep my car cool. <laughs> yeah, just so I'm like electric water pump. All this other crazy shit, like, uh, just so you could band aid it and drive it until <laughs> until you really got to take it apart. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might be head gasket time. Mm. Mm. Well, luckily they're they're pretty strong, so yeah. Iron block, big boat anchor <laughs> in the front of our cars. Our K series, K series iron block. No, they're aluminum. Oh, interesting. But yeah. they're still like raced but they're out. Like, but they're sick. It's that Honda shit, man. As Frank would say. <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. How fucking long has it been? I don't know. Take a break with our sponsors, Modelo Beer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like nine something. What time do we start? Mm, let's see. Probably like two hours. Whatever you need. I think we're done, dude. Yeah? Yeah. Was yeah. I think this we're, was like an exceptional episode? Yeah, this is the best one we've ever done for sure. <laughs> is that what you say every time? <laughs> no one ever asks. <laughs> I have a friend that uh, he like helps me with like my Mac computers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And every time he like gives me a new computer, he goes, this is my best machine. <laughs> every, every fucking time. <laughs> this is my best machine. And he hands it to me. And you're like, I don't really believe you. <laughs> yeah. You keep saying that. <laughs> what? No, I mean, like, you're like, hey, man, I, I don't know if I believe you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you keep saying that. It's really not. It doesn't hit the same. Well, this guy's a fucking character. So mm. anyone who has like a Mac repair shop is probably a weirdo. Yeah, I've met a few and they're <laughs> generally all pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out if you fix Max, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have a shop and you're weird, even cooler. Um, this isn't the wrong with being weird. No, being weird is cool. Definitely not. I, if I had a problem being weird, I would hate myself. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like it. I like being weird. Yeah, who wants to be fucking boring? I don't know. Some people do. They're like, man, I just want to. Just want to be normal. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like I don't know. I, I don't know if I wanna yeah, I don't know if I can handle that life. <laughs> very simple. Uh not a lot of crazy shit. Um not driving cars into my friends. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, who who want, who would want to get rid of that? Not yeah, me. let's drive soon. I need to I wanna need to drive. 
Yeah. I need it's to, been a long time for me. I need Luke to weld my lollipop back in the my <laughs> Oh, ripped out? <laughs> yeah. Like the threads? Yeah. How? Uh, oh you hit a oh you hit a berm on West, huh? Yeah. Wow. I hit it pretty hard. <laughs> um you know. Yeah, get it done. Just the uh, fucking drift car shit. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, fucking follow Pandora Motorsport on Instagram. Follow Aaron. Cheers. <laughs> Is that how we close it out? Uh, follow Get His Cast. Follow, I'm, you know, if anyone even makes it this far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> follow uh, all the stuff. Also, shout out. Shout out. Can you people. see, can you see on your like podcast how, how far people make it? Yeah. I can. Oh, okay. I usually know if it's like a good episode or not based on how far people make it on the episode. Oh, I'm not going to ever tell anybody who's was good who's, or bad. Oh, shit. I'll be, I'll be but fucking I know. bugging I know. you. I know. Uh, <laughs> I hope this was a great episode. I told you, dude, it was the best one we've ever done. That's good. Please tell that to the next person as well. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah, nice talking in front of you guys. Yeah, with Palmer. Yeah, my homie. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm happy. I'm happy you're doing this. I wish you the best in your business and your endeavors. Uh, and I'll support any way I can. Thank you, Palmer. I'll do the same. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks for hanging out with me on this Friday night. <laughs> Shout out Rhoda for getting us burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out Rhoda. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. See ya. Peace. All right. Yeah. Yo, you made it all the way to the end of the episode. You should see therapy therapists. <laughs> um, makes us look good to the podcast overlords if you watch listen to the whole thing and of course youtube um be sure to subscribe and like and all that shit um follow us on ig at good as cast follow the guests check out their links in the description check out the sponsors links in the description and uh just want to say thank you for making it to the end of the episode you fucking legends (laughs) 